Greetings and welcome to another edition of AUHSD Future Talks. I'm your host, Superintendent Michael Matsuda, and as our 7,000 plus uh, listeners know that this show is dedicated to the future of education, the future of young people, and um, the future of jobs and how we're connecting young people's interests to jobs and what we are doing about the future of the community and of this country. We've been very blessed to have amazing guests from across the spectrum of education, including college presidents and deans and uh, business leaders as well, but also students from our own district. And we're very honored and pleased to introduce a young man who has a bright future, recent UCLA graduate, a graduate of Anaheim High School, before that Sycamore. Welcome to the show, Rudy Acevedo. Well, thank you, Mr. Matsuda, for having me. It's it's truly my honor to be part of this very small and exclusive uh, club of people that have been part of the AUHSD Future Talks. So thank you, Mr. Matsuda, for having me. It, the honor is mine. So, um, you know, as a recent grad, fairly recent graduate and someone who really knows from a student perspective what we're trying to do and how AUHSD is different from other districts. And I know that you have shared with me, like, you know, you've talked to other students at UCLA and students outside, sort of comparing their their uh, educational experience to AUHSD's. What are some of the differences that have come up for you, Rudy? Oh, <laughs> it's like, to be honest, it's been like day and night. It really, it really has been. Um, definitely one of the biggest um, differences that I saw based on my educational experience and the educational experience of many other students is that their education was really just focused on past on getting, uh, you know, test scores, on getting high SATs, on, you know, passing the AP classes. And so, and it really wasn't focused on um, the, the world around them. Uh, you know, for example, current events, or even just learning how to talk about um, uh, or even just learning how to talk about social issues. So when I was at UCLA, I would talk often about my background in AUHSD and my involvement, for example, in civic engagement, thanks to my role with the Anaheim Bros, um, the work I did when I was your intern, uh, giving the pledge, giving the pledge talks, and it really blows them away because whenever I talk about my education experience, I really never talk about, you know, I never really talk about, you know, like the classwork or anything like that. I talk about the work that I did, you know, through civic engagement and how more than anything that really impacted me. And that really, it really helped me shape um, not only who I am as a person, um, but also, but also like the way I, but also, you know, the way I view the world. And it was really my background in AUHSD. It's, you know, the, the service of others. It's about, you know, trying to, it's about, you know, having good character. Cause whenever, cause whenever I, when I, I knew that when I went out to UCLA, those were going to be my priorities, you know, just, ha you know, be a good person, be compassionate and be willing to serve others. And, you know, and those are values that are obviously very instilled in AUHSD. So when I, so when I went out there and I would talk to them about like this emphasis that we had, it really blew a lot of them away, you know, because I mean, I went to UCLA with obviously um some of the breasts, some of the best and brightest young minds, but it was really, but their educational background, it was really just focused on, it was, it was very, it was very superficial. I'll say that it was very superficial. And so when, so, you know, when things like the pandemic hit, um, for a lot of them, it, it blew them for a lot of them. And I don't really blame them. Um, but for them, it was really, it was really a shell shock, but thankfully, you know, through my time in AUHSD, I learned I learned about practices such as you know about mindfulness about resilience, so you know it really so you know it really it really set me up for success. I feel I feel it did. Um, so that was definitely a big part. That was definitely a big difference between the education experience that I had, as well as um from others from other students. And but that being said, it impressed it it blew them away how. I would talk about, you know, even though our educational focus, A, which is D, it's not based on the test scores or the grades or getting good high grades. You know, we would, we, a lot of us still get good grades. So that blew them away is that even though the emphasis is not that, it's more about the character, learning about these soft skills um, that will, the 21st century soft skills, you know, we're still doing very well. So that really blew them away. So, so it's really about 
applied learning, right? And Absolutely. through civic engagement or through learning about issues that um, that are meaningful to the student and to you in particular. But also instructional practices like these TED Talks, we call them the NIFA soapbox speeches, mm -hmm. and which happens uh, across the district beginning in seventh grade. Could you, and I know that you were a national finalist in a, your TED Talk, uh, and uh, could you sort of share with the audience what that, how meaningful that was, that experience, and um, not every teacher does it, but enough teacher does it in class. Uh, many English teachers do it. Um, what is that NIFA soapbox speech, and why do you think that that is so impactful for uh, a young student? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So I did. My, so my partner, my, you know, my partner Daniel Yala, who's also in Anaheim. AUHSD alumni and myself, we worked on that together. Um, we we worked on that. Um, it was really like the first year. So back 20, 2016, 2017, that academic year. So the soapbox speech that we that we um focused on was the impact of Latinos Lat uh, Latin X on you know on elections and voter turnout. And so what our so we presented the issue that hey, you know, Lat Latinos were basically a sleeping giant. Um, a lot of us, especially during that time, obviously lately, thankfully, um, you know, after the 20, 2018, 2020 um, elections, um, Latino participation has increased. But during that time, it was really it was really low. And so what we wanted to do is showcase to the students, um, because a lot of the students that we serve at AUHSD are Latinos. Um, we really wanted to showcase to them, you know, hey, we are we're really a sleeping giant. And so we're trying, it's, it was really a call to action to them that, you know, like, you know, we got to get out there because if we don't, you know, others are going to be making the decisions for us. And so for, and so for us, what that, that experience really did um, is it really, really helps give the students confidence and their communication skills. Um, Cause that's something that's, that's something that goes a long way. Um, I cannot tell you how, how many times and again like this isn't to brag about myself but more of um just talking about the impact that this experiences have had on me um you know i've sat in interviews i've sat um in presentations and that's one of the things that really has blown you know interviewers employers away is like my ability to communicate and i definitely i and i know that definitely that experience um and the soapbox um the the catella talks as it was known back then it really, it really, it really just um, gave us a, not 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 only it, did it help us develop our communicational skills, but it really helped us give us more confidence that um, that we're able to raise awareness. And that's another part that's and that's another part that's so impactful about these TED talks. Um, these um, I'm sorry, these soapbox speeches is that they is that we as students are given the freedom to choose whatever topic it is that we want to discuss. And so for us. For many of us, um, that's when I was hearing these um, these soapbox speeches. It was my first time hearing about some of the awareness about um, some of these issues that we're talking about. So and, and there, there, are, there are a lot of different issues, right? Absolutely, that absolutely. From um, race, ethnicity, absolutely. diversity, mental health, global mm -hmm. warming, healthcare, mm -hmm. right? All these things are coming up in these uh, TED talks, which which we call AUHSD talks now that are embedded in the classroom experiences where students find their purpose and passion in life. Um, you know, right now, the country is very divided by uh, polarized even, uh, not just divided, uh, and a lot of hate talk about race, ethnicity, religion, which I'm, as an educational leader, it really disturbs me about the threat to our democracy. Could you talk about the disposition and attitudes of young people in our schools, because I think that they have uh, probably the most inclusive mindset. Sure, there's people on the fringes, but mm -hmm. when I talk to young people, it's totally different from what the rhetoric of older people in terms of this hate talk. Could you comment on that and um, how young people, if given the opportunity to voice their minds or mostly very inclusive and different from the rhetoric that you see from the adults oh absolutely well i, I well i would like to start off answering this by just saying that 
it is really talking to young students, um, talking to the, the youth that really makes me hopeful about the future. So, you know, oftentimes you'll hear older people say, oh, you know, like these kids, they're, they're, you know, they're sensitive, um, you know, they're, they're, you know, um, you can't say like, you know, you can't joke or a lot, but it's, and you know, it's really, it's really the youth that really give me hope about the, about the future. Um, one of the things that really surprised me, um, it's, it's because, so I graduated from AUHSD in 2017. So we were very civically active. Um, but now that I've gone, now that I've graduated, now that I've gone back to AUHSD and I've interacted with students, it has amazed me just how well informed these students are in social issues. Um, and what's even inspired me even more is that I know that these are student. I know that these are students that not only do they know, but I know that they're very determined to take action, um, to take action. Um, so upon I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you an example of that. When the George Floyd, uh, you know, killing happened, our students uh, just organized themselves to have uh, a rally around Black Lives Matter. Now, the audience may or may not know this, but we only have about two or three percent African American students. Yet there were over a thousand students that came, mostly Latino. Uh, some Asian and some uh, white, but very few African Americans. What do you think the students, in terms of why, you know, because a lot of the adults, they have a hard time getting their head wrapped around Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. why, did, why would the Latino students step up for African American students? What was yeah. going on there, in your opinion? Yeah, so I mean, so definitely in my opinion, um, what you're seeing here is uh, you're really, what I'm seeing here is you're really seeing a shift in mindset because you know for a, a long time we've had a lot of leadership um i mean this is really I, I i would argue since like the 70s um there's been a lot of um there's been a lot of leaders uh advocating for individualism so you know whatever so whatever goes so whatever goes on it's it's you know it's my responsibility it's not my responsibility for others problems you know other other people's issues you know that's not that's not my issues and so really what you're seeing here is you're seeing a shift in mindset where it's real where you know students are really starting to see that hey you know we're all in this together and so even if i have nothing to gain at at no monetary um gain out of helping you your battle is still my battle and that's something that's, that's really that's really mlk's uh mindset absolutely. and injustice injustice to one person is injustice, it's in, it's to, injustice all, right? to everyone Abs and, yeah absolutely and, also, and so and also is embodied in the fifth c compassion yeah compassion absolutely absolutely so the so the fact that you know the stu so the fact that even though such a small portion of AUHSD is you know is is african-american um it didn't surprise me it didn't surprise me at all because you're because what you're seeing because what you're seeing here and this is really what gives me hope and I did experience this a lot at, at UCLA, is you're really starting to see this collective mindset that, like, as you mentioned, as MLK mentioned, um, injustice to one person is an injustice to everyone. So even, so even if, you know, even if Latino students are, aren't being directly affected in the same way that it is for, you know, um, those issues that the Black Lives Matter they're advocating for, they're still, you know, they still say, hey, you know, that's not okay. You know, we want a just society and we want a just society for everybody. So it's so I'm really seeing this collective mindset it's, and it's no and it's shifting away from this, you know, very individualistic mindset. So when you say collective mindset, are, are you uh, talking about socialism or communism? Because that's no. what that's what some folks say. They they say that you're 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 uh, all about uh, socialist movement or something. Uh -huh. Well. Well, I'll say well, I'll say this. This is my response to that. We as young people, um, I firmly believe that we are products of the world that was built around us. And what you've seen for the last decades is again, this individualism is very pull yourselves up by the bootstraps. Um, you know, what you're seeing what you what these issues that are, the youth that we've been, you know, we've been facing, so Black Lives Matter, the attacks on our democracy um global warming um these are issues that are the direct cause of you know decades of inaction you know of individualism of individualism people, it's, it's, people that are just want to want to uh make more money in the short term right absolutely so for example you know 
Medi healthcare for everyone. We're the only country that does not have that. And uh, and so the mindset of a lot of, especially like the older folks, like, uh -huh. you know, the people that have been in leadership for a long time is, well, you know, I have my health care. Like, why should I pay for other people's health care? And so real and so really and so really my response to that is that we have to have a different approach to these issues because clearly this individualism um, that has been uh, propagated for so many decades now has really has really created the conditions that we that we find ourselves in. And so, for example, so issues such as the the fragile, you know, how weak in our democracy has been global warming, um, racial inequities. Like I could go on and on, you know. Do you think our Do you think our democracy is in trouble? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I yeah. absolutely believe that our demo. I I know our democracy is in trouble, and I definitely and I would and I would say, as troubled as it is, it is because of what I've seen, um, from from the youth, from other young people. You know, right now, right now I'm reading, right now I'm reading this book. It's called The Ones We've Been Waiting For. And it's, it's an amazing, it's an amazing book. So what it talks about, it talks about young millennials. So, you know, Alexandro Casio cortez people to judge. Um, it talks about how we, they, millennials, young people have inherited this world with so many problems that have been largely ignored. And so instead of agonizing, you know, they're organized and you're starting to see this a lot, like with young people, like, for example, at, at UCLA, even even what happened, um, you know, in the Middle East with Israel and Palestine, they were, you know, they were protesting students from different race, creed, um, religion, background, they're protests, you know, they're protesting that. So um, as fragile as I see our democracy in right now, it gives me hope that I know that um, we're not we're not backing down like without a fight. So I'm going to segue, and maybe this is um, part of that think new thinking um, and a new way of doing school is this Magnolia Agriscience Community Center. Now, you have a job for a nonprofit, Ocapica, and you are working with uh, teacher leaders on this MAC project, MAC for short, M-A-C-C. Um, could you, in your words, how is that? I mean, some people say, well, that's just an urban farm, but it's more than that. How, how do you describe uh, what the MAC is and how do you think it's going to transform education? So the, the MAC itself, so uh, for those of you, so for those in our audience that don't know about it, it stands for the Magnolia Agri-Science Community Center. And it's really you know when you know when people ask me to describe it i sometimes have a i sometimes struggle just because it's so it's so impact it's so impactful and you know there's so many different ways that it's going to transform the community it's going to transform education but really the way i see it is i see the i see the i see the mac as really uh as, as really a place where it's really going to transform the community and so what i mean and so what i mean by that is students are not just going to be for example one of the ways one of our main goals and we promote this a lot is we really want to transform um the food desert situation in our neighborhoods into food oases so yes so yes you know students are going to be able to you know grow their own food grow their own um, fruits, vegetables, and be able to produce the fruits and benefits that they eat. But it's not just about that. You know, um, if we're really talking about transforming education, um, students are going to see firsthand by learning about food deserts, by learning about um, the, you know, just the health inequities. They're going to they're going to know that, hey, like we deserve better. Why? Why? Why hasn't, um, you know, why haven't our leaders in office? Why haven't they been? Um, taking or haven't they been taking action into this? So it's so it's really like how you describe it, Mr. Metz. So it's really a learning lab. Um, so with so with that, so with and a lot of people get amazed at how when we talk about how cross curricular is going to be. So you know, it's not just the science students, the science classes that are going to be working on it. No, you can in, you can embed that into English. You know, writing poetry. 
in social sciences, when you learn about the agricultural revolution, you know, it's going to be embed it's going to be embedded in that. So what this so what this is going to do is it's going to give students a definitely a unique pers a unique experience in their educational experience where it's not just in the classroom, because I know that a lot of students because I know that sometimes that can get that can get dull. Well, it's um, both in the classroom and out of the classroom, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's not, and it's not just an after school thing. I mean, no, it's not. The it's teachers are bringing these issues into the classroom. Yes. And I'm very interested in the science of it too, in that our kids are learning the, uh, how do you use data analytics to create baseline mm -hmm. data, right? Mm -hmm. um, which is going to be a huge skill, no matter what field that they, that they uh, enter. Absolutely. And then Absolutely. cutting edge areas like biotechnology at NIM High School, our young people are going to learn how to edit genetically edit plants to become yeah. more drought resistant in in school right and also yeah. through their dual credit uh classes so uh very very uh exciting potential about transforming neighborhoods right how does how do you think that experience is going to connect to um changing the mindset or even affecting this thing called democracy which arguably is under threat how do you think what's the connection there do you think yeah absolutely i mean there definitely is there definitely is a connection because when students you know obviously the mac is still you know um is still being under construction so you know students aren't students the parents um our community really hasn't um been able to utilize it as we wanted uh just quite yet but once they but once they do it they're going to be they're going to be noticing that hey why is it that for example in our community why is it that we're food we're we're, we're why is it that when we take a look at the data, we're having all these inequities in other neighborhoods? They're not, you know. And so, and and for example, why is it that we have you know low access to fresh, nutritious food, and you know we're having all these we're having all these health issues? And so, what this Mac, the way I'm envisioning is that this Mac is going to allow students to connect the dots, and to see that a lot of these issues, a lot of the issues that um, they're facing. It's not, you know, and again, going back to this whole, like in, going back to my rant against individualism, it's not because, oh, you know, well, you don't eat healthy. Well, that's your fault. You know, you choose to not eat healthy. And no, it's, we, the students will learn, we don't eat healthy. And it's not because we don't want to, it's because it's very inaccessible, you know? And so, cause at the end of the day, democracy is about taking action, you know? And this is something that I like to, this is something that I like to tell young people is you know democracy is not a spectator sport you know you really ha you really have to participate in it and so the way i view democracy is, is you know it's people just ordinary folks being able to take action and advocate for what it for causes that they believe in and so with and so you know for example with this you know uh, a seventh grader at, at dale may have never been exposed to social issues or inequities and so once they start working on the mac and they start learning about you know, food deserts and all these other issues, you know, it, you know, it could, it could spark something. It could spark, you know, it could, it could, you know, you know, light the fire inside them that, hey, you know, we deserve better than this. We want to create a better world for ourselves and for, for our future generations. Well, you know, I was fortunate to participate in a town hall that you helped organize with, uh, mm -hmm. for the MAC just past week. And we had uh, about 300 uh, participants, uh, adults, parents, and students from across the district. In fact, they counted about eight schools that were involved. So there is a lot of excitement in this new agri-science laboratory called the MAC. And there's a lot of uh, hope and potential for all of us in transforming Central Anaheim to a food uh, oasis, food, nutrition, healthcare oasis. And I want to thank you on behalf of our nearly 29,000 students, Rudy, for the work that you're doing. And I know that you're very much into this uh, giving credit across, because uh, you have that collective mindset for sure. But I am so proud that you are a product of AUHSD and that you are giving back to, uh, to all of us because you care about the future of Anaheim and uh, and you are about transforming our community so we have a better future for all. So thank you so much, Rudy, for your time. And we look forward to uh, continued 
conversations. No, absolutely. Well, well, Mr. Matsuda, I'll just say this. Um, you know, that meant the world to me. Um, your kind words, it, it really meant the world to me. But if anything, thank you and thank AUHSD because if it wasn't for the education experience that I had about, you know, caring for others, um, being a good person, if it wasn't for AUHSD, you know, <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't know, I don't know what, I don't know what I'd be doing right now. And so thank you. So, you know, thank you really for helping, helping, helping give us purpose, you know, and leaving purposeful lives and, you know, having a collective mindset that, hey, we're all in this together. So, you know, thank you, because if it wasn't for you, if it wasn't for AUHSD and their mission and its values, you know, um, I probably wouldn't be here in this position that I am right now. So give yourself some credit too.